to serve God on the Lord's Day here in Northern Virginia. And thank you for joining with me for this evening's program. Uh, by the way, as always, help us to reach others on social media by subscribing to our YouTube, YouTube channel, if that's where you're watching from. Or if you're on our Facebook page, why don't you go ahead and like our page and, um, and share uh, the uh, program that you're watching right now or even start a watch party. Thank you so much for helping us uh, build our social media presence. Well, this morning in our morning service, uh, which was in person as well as uh, live stream, I preached on what do we mean when we pray, thy kingdom come. That's a part of the prayer topic list that Jesus gave to his disciples when they asked Jesus Christ to teach them how to pray. And, uh, and Jesus gave them a list of topics to talk to God the Father about. And the second one was, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, we had a look at that this morning in our morning service. If you missed the service, I hope that you'll take time to go back and watch that on our, uh, all from our website uh, and our YouTube channel. Well, this evening we have the privilege of having Brent Bergie, Brent and Selena, and their children are missionaries to South Africa. They've been a part of our missionary family for a few years now. God has uniquely uh, burdened their heart for the children of South Africa, and they are active in, uh, in the planting of a, of a young church uh, in South Africa and uh, adopting children and ministering to orphans and needy children in South Africa. And they're in the States right now uh, and uh, trying to get back into South Africa as soon as the COVID travel restrictions lift. Uh, and uh, they're, um, we're going to enjoy uh, hearing from Brent share some updates on their family and ministry. So let's go ahead and welcome Brent Berge from South Africa. Brent, it's so good to see you. Welcome from South Africa. Well, thank you. It's good to be with you guys uh, very much. Uh, uh, we love the ministry there, the folks. I'm excited to be on with you today. Uh, a, a real blessing. This is one of the great benefits of the COVID-19 situation. Uh, we've been able to enjoy some conversations with some of the missionaries that we have the privilege of partnering with. And so I was so excited it worked out that uh, we could chat for a few minutes on video. I know the people will be so uh yeah, interested and uh, look forward to uh, this time uh, with you hearing about your family. Now, tell us, I know last summer was a, uh, a very difficult summer for you guys. Uh, your medical yeah. furlough, um, this is a uh, very serious surgery. It's been a year. How, how are things progressing with Lissy? Um, they're, they're going really well uh, since Lissy has had surgery. Praise the Lord, uh, she's not had any seizures. Um, you know, when we left South Africa last year, she was at the point of where she couldn't even function on a basic level. And so um, I'm excited to report today that she is doing well in school. I mean, she's crisp, she's sharp, she's just doing amazing. And it's it's really because of God's people and God's people praying. And I believe that. I believe, I believe God did that work in her life to... Um, uh, that show people that that praying is very very powerful and so um very very thankful that she is where she's at right now um hey. I, god's been very good lissy's uh what 10 years old now yeah she'll be uh next month she will be 11 uh her and gabby are are two weeks apart and so that they kind of have a a healthy exchange about you know being the older <laughs> sister versus the younger but yeah it, uh she'll be 11 and um she is growing very very quickly too quickly all of my kids are yeah uh, i love the story of your family from the time i saw your first um media presentation introducing your family to me and the church here and just how god has worked in your all's lives over the years uh, just been phenomenal uh, some of the people watching this today uh, don't know you as well as I know you. And so uh, run down through the family um, as much as a dad's mind can uh, can remember the, <laughs> the ages of the kids. But uh, yeah. uh, run down and just share with us a, a, a word about each of the uh, 
family members, of course, your wife, Selena, what a blessing she's been uh, to um, the ministry. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's uh, Ellie turned 18 this year. She has been taking online classes at Crown and um, she'll continue to do that. Um, her heart really is for missions, full-time missions. Um, that's where her heartbeat is, uh, wherever God would have her to be. And she's a tremendous blessing to our family. Nathaniel is 15. He is taller than me now. So actually, which isn't saying a whole lot, but um, he has grown height just amazing. Uh, so he's about two inches taller than me now. I think he's 6'1", six, 6'2", six, somewhere around there. And, um, you know, God's using him. And before we, we left to come back to the States, uh, he's very active in ministry. He is uh, one of our song leaders and is active in our public school ministry and, and things like that. And so now he's working on music and and learning musical instruments for God's glory and, and excited to see how he's going to use them with that. Um, so he's, he's also got a heart for ministry and we're excited that that's the direction that, that he's headed. Noah's 13 and Noah is our creationist. He loves animals, has always loved animals. Um, he fits the name very, very well. And um, he, God's really been burning him for full-time ministry. And I'm really careful. You know, I want, obviously, uh, the Holy Spirit to lead my kids. And he's obviously given them parents to be able to help a guy and direct him. But um, he, he wants to learn how to preach. And he wants to uh, uh, get as active as he can. And so he's, Amen. we're very, very blessed with our kiddos. Um, and then below that is Ethan. Ethan is 11. And um, he's doing great and uh, also loves music. Um, and then below Ethan, we have Gabby, who, like I said, is two weeks older than Lissy. Um, matter of fact, they, they just had a – Gabby and Lissy had a massive uh, uh, bicycle crash last night. We thought we were going to have to take him to the hospital, but uh, they're doing – I was gone, and Selena said she, all she saw was Lissy flip over a bike, um, which is never a good thing for a parent to see. But they're they're good, and they're doing wonderful. Um, below Lissy, then we have Andrew. Andrew's nine and doing very, very well, uh, very smart kiddo. And then we have Titus, uh, last but not least, uh, and he's five. He'll actually, this month, he'll be six. and um, he is, uh, he, he definitely has the family wrapped around his little finger as his, as the youngest. So they're, um, you know, and it's fun. It's fun to see when we have opportunity to minister here in the States. I always love ministering with my family and it's, it is one of my highlights of that I have. So they're doing great. Thank you for asking. That's exciting. That's exciting. Re remind our church family here. Uh, how many of your children uh, were born to you and Selena? And how many of them have you uh, chosen to bring into your family, into your life? Right. Well, and I forgot Johanna. Johanna is actually not too far away from there. Johanna uh, is 23. She is, is living up there um, and, and doing very, very well. And uh, so I didn't want to forget her. But we have adopted four, four children from China. And then we have five biological children. and and. Amazing. God used uh, infertility in our lives early on in our marriage really to give us a burden for um, children without parents and um, used our trips to China and things to really get us to where we are today um, ministry wise. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Amen. That's exciting. Well, the big news in 2020 is COVID. How has your family uh, navigated through and uh, and your ministry, how's it been impacted by COVID nineteen? Well, um, like everybody, yeah, it's you know a lot of times when you have events, it's it's more regionally based, but COVID has affected the whole world, and so um, we had to make the very difficult choice uh, last March uh, or late February to come back to the states, and it really. It was not centered on COVID. It was indirectly from COVID because um, some of you may remember we had issues getting our visas when we moved over there and we originally got denied. 
And then we went over there anyway, and then they approved them. And so uh, things have loosened up regarding visas um, uh, since then. And so we had applied for renewal for our visas and everything was looking good. And then, as you said, COVID hit. And um, they were set to expire at the end of March. And so as, as I had called the U.S. Embassy in South Africa, and then also I would call over into the national capital in South Africa, um, trying to get answers whether we could stay or not um, if our visa had expired, and nobody could give us any answers. Well, then those departments completely shut down, and it was advised uh, to us to leave the country rather than face getting banned for five years. And uh, I guess so the, the, the good part of that now, I think, <laughs> uh, they have made a decision on our visas, they have opened it up, but they're, the, the response is sitting actually in an office in Port Elizabeth, South Africa, where, where we live. And so we are trying now to be able to get answers to what that decision was. But um, so we would love to have that. But ministry wise, it is obviously uh, just like uh, most churches have been affected by that uh, in a huge way. Um, you know, our, our children that we care for over in South Africa, we had to get care for them. And actually praise the Lord that we had relationships already established um, with a, a couple that we trust that um, actually they run a baby haven where our children are safe and they have been in lockdown. Um, so there's not been any cases of COVID. So we, we miss them dearly. Um, but we are very, very thankful that those children are safe. And, um, you know, we had just um, started a brand new church plant um, last yeah. October. And so as, as a baby church and God was really blessing and Things were really moving in a, in a wonderful direction. We were seeing um, people accept Christ as their Savior and being discipled. And had, we had, had rented a building and everything was moving forward. And then COVID happened. And mm -hmm. we were faced with what are you going to do in that situation? And so like many of you have done, um, we went to Zoom and, and started doing online services. And, you know, COVID hit six weeks after it did in the states and so the attitude in south africa was oh it's not going to be serious it's not going to hit us here and even our people on our church were like aren't you kind of jumping the gun a little bit but we knew what was coming and and now um uh, you know schools still have not opened there and and south africa has been completely devastated by covid the numbers that they're showing are, are not even remotely close to what the realities are over there so we still do. Um, we praise the Lord. We still have our services every Sunday morning, uh, seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday. We are uh, live on Zoom with our church family and having our church service uh, with our South, South African church. And then we after that, we head off to our, our, our church ministries that we have updating churches like yours and then also um, raising additional support. And so um, it has been different. Um, it has been challenging. It is but is not unique to us um, as as many Christians have had to, to adapt um, to what's going on. Now that church that you're speaking of, is that the Abundant Life Baptist Church, the one that you started? I saw yes. a picture of the building that uh, that you folks have uh, rented for that with the sign up. I And I was uh, uh, pretty sure that was the one you're speaking of. I would uh, drive over this certain area um, many times for two years and I would try to talk to guys be like you know um, don't you guys want to plant a church there I'll help you plant a church and their hearts were in different places for for ministry that God had put there and really God started burdening me um, to to somewhat of my surprise to to plant a church there and so that's that's what we did and we planted abundant life Baptist Church and uh, God has blessed um, our church is growing. I don't know how to look at this. Our church is growing more online than it was even when we were there. Um, we've got visitors inviting visitors to, to come to our service, and it's it's been wonderful. Um, you know, we have Bible studies for the ladies, and we have Bible studies for the men. Um, and we every Friday night, we have family night uh, on Zoom uh, where the families get together, and we'll have a challenge from God's Word. And then we'll also uh, play games. And just really have a time of fellowship. Uh, they 
they've had a, a very severe lockdown in South Africa. As a matter of fact, for the first two months, they literally, uh, only one person could leave their house property at a time. Uh, and you had to be over the age of 18. Um, and that was just to get food. And so we've had a little more freedom and, and probably have paid the price, I, maybe to a point, I don't know. Um, but it has been very challenging for those folks over there. And um, yeah. we're burdened, obviously, for our, our, our church family and, and wish we were there to be able to meet their needs more. Um, but they understand. And uh, they're very curious uh, what happens over here. And they're very curious to what we do over here. And um, so it's it's been a good learning experience as well. Oh, that's neat. Uh, now, yeah. you folks were in the process of, of raising funds um, before you started Abundant Life Baptist Church, uh, because you were, you were, your heart has been so um, passionate about the orphans and the needy children in South Africa. And uh, how is that, uh, how is all of that progressing? Well, <clears throat> thanks to the, the help of your church and churches like it, we were able to raise the funds for the land. God gave us a wonderful piece of property. Um, it is almost 25 acres of land in, in an area we never thought we would be able to be in. And um, it, it, it's been amazing. It has one house on it. We're going to make that into a cottage. Um, and that will be, that'll be our first, uh, that's our first building on the ground. And so, so we actually lack one signature um, for it being completely completed in ours. And it has been um, challenging, to say the least, uh, because we waited many months to do this. And so I just actually got an email from the, the, uh, the real estate attorney last week that they expect the signature any time now. And so that will then allow us to be able to do phase one. And we're actually fundraising for phase one right now to where we can get everybody on our uh, that, that's on the ground there. We can get everybody on campus. And that's really big. Um, you know, God has given us a, a nurse to work with. And I don't even think that was the case when we heard last year. Um, she is a pediatric nurse. She's a missionary that that God brought along our side. So medical missions has always been a heartbeat of mine, and, and God has answered that prayer. So we're really excited at what God's going to do with medical missions as well, uh, with the children's home and how those things kind of work together. Uh, very exciting. Uh, that is exciting. Now, um, remind me again, um, you're, how, how much longer are you anticipating being here in the States? When are you thinking that you might be able to transition back to South Africa? Well, that's on hold. We were originally praying for October. Um, and I mean, we'll see. It's like everything else. It depends on what's going on over there. And it also depends on what's going on over here uh, as far as who they let in. Part of that may be um, the, the result on what kind of a visa that you have as a foreigner. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really praying that, that having visas, Lord willing, will help us be able to get in there a little quicker. So we're talking anywhere probably from, from late October to early January. Um, that's what we're shooting for. So we're, we're still scheduling meetings and, and doing that until we hear otherwise uh, be able to do that. We were going to take our furlough next year, um, but, but with this, we're moving our, our furlough up this year. And, and so that way we can, we can stay on the field longer when we go back. Sure. Oh, that's awesome. Brent, um, certainly uh, during all of this uh, challenging times, uh, we when we read the Bible, God shows us things that maybe we hadn't seen before because of what's going on around us. Are there any uh, any portions of God's word that uh, that He has really impressed upon your heart during this time? I'd love to hear uh, hear you just share some thoughts from the Word of God here uh, while we're together on phone. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's. <sighs> You know, you don't have to be on social media very long to kind of see people are very frustrated and, and even Christians are very frustrated. And COVID, unfortunately, has, has polarized believers in one direction or the other. And um, I, 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 I have found that if I'm not careful, and I believe other Christians are struggling with this, that we have, we have eye problems. Um, we have me problems. And... And our focus, if we're not careful, has, has really 
we've lost our focus on what's truly important to the Lord. Um, we've we have Americanized, I believe, this uh, event. This is not an American event, and and I I'll be honest, Pastor. I wish a lot of people were as focused on Jesus Christ as they are about whether we should wear masks or, or not wear masks, or what what rights I have as an American versus you know what. I have no rights as a Christian. I'm, I'm supposed to die to myself. And uh, the Bible talks about, you know, if, if, if I'm asked to carry something a mile, I am supposed to go two miles or, or go double uh, of what that is. And that's what the, the early church, that's what they were facing in persecution. This is not persecution in, in a sense. And, and I look at <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 1 and 2, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are also, also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In verse 2, look at this, looking unto Jesus, not looking under the mask, not looking under the government, not looking under uh, or unto my retirement plan, not, not looking on ways that I can figure it out. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so when I look at that, Pastor, I see this. I see what weight have we added to ourselves that we were not meant to carry and have nothing, have no business carrying. The weight that we have, listen, and and, and then you look at verse 2, looking unto Jesus. That means the backpack of the weight of this world that we put on ourselves. We're not meant to carry most of that weight, if not all that weight, that we do. You see, we are supposed to be looking unto Jesus. What would Jesus' response be to COVID-19? If Jesus were physically here, and let's say he began his earthly ministry in the year 2020, what would his focus be on in the United States of America if he was here? Pastor, I don't think it would be on masks. Pastor, I don't think it would be on what my rights are. You know what his focus would be on? The people who are dying and lost and going to a Christless eternity and spending eternity in hell, the lake of fire. That is what Jesus Christ's response would be. Because you know what? The persecution they were facing, remember, they were a people that were occupied by the Roman government. They were occupied. So life was not all, all peaches and cream uh, at the time of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ in those times was not focused on the government. He was not focused on his lack of rights. He was focused on reaching the lost for himself. Okay, so as a believer, what should I be focused on? Well, if I'm commanded to be Christ-like, and Jesus said, if he would suffer things, guess what? I would also suffer things as well. And so instead of looking at this as I'm losing my rights, as a Christian, I have no rights. I'm dead. So and, and, and I'm all for being an American, okay? I am all for, for I, I love America, but I am a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ way before I am ever an American. Because America could come and go like any other nation has come and gone. America could come and go. But you know what? Jesus Christ has been and will be forever. And so look at looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You know what? If Jesus Christ can endure the cross, can endure my sin, I can endure what I'm going through right now. I can endure the... the in, uh, uh, the situations in my life that are not convenient to me. Mm -hmm. okay. Much bigger thing when we look at the cross compared to what we're going through and what Jesus Christ redeemed us from. Yeah. There's no comparison at all, preacher. Yes. And so 
um, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ gave up everything for you and me. Everything. He gave the splendors of heaven and he took that weight that we talked about, that baggage that we were carrying. The unfortunate thing is, is many believers have picked up their own baggage and put it back on their backs to carry it. Folks, we have no business carrying that weight. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. If you give it to Jesus, do you know what that does? That helps us stay much more focused as a believer on what is truly important. And, you know, instead of, of, of bickering with one another, and we can have differing opinions. I'm not against having a differing opinion. But when it hurts the cause of Christ, and then we focus on it more than the cause of Christ, that's where the baggage is. Yeah. My mask yeah. is not important, more important than my master, Jesus Christ. And so yeah. that is something that the Lord has really pounded right. into me. Um, over and over and over again stay focused stay focused stay focused because the world speed right now is dizzying and if you turn your eyes off sometimes it's very hard to get them back on so thank you so much for letting me share that oh that's, that's some really good insight brent um, i love to hear people that have been in different parts of the world they're wrapped up in the ministry of reaching people and their perspectives are fresh and I appreciate so much your sharing that today. That was um, that was a blessing to me. Amen. Thank you. It Praise is the Lord. So good to see you, Brent, and uh, to hear ah. updates about what's happening in your life and family and plans for when you get back to to South Africa. And what a privilege it is for us uh, to have the opportunity to partner with you and and to know that uh, that we can have a small part in what God is doing through you and your family there in South Africa. And thank you for the privilege of being able to be on your partnership team and, uh, and to try to be of little help we can along the way. Well, thank you so much. You, you guys are very, very faithful. And I hear from, from uh, your folks uh, via email and, and messenger encouraging and praying for us. And Amen. you'll never know what that does to encourage your missionaries. You've got missionaries over the globe in every time zone almost, I'm sure. And you never know when that missionary is in a situation to where they need your prayers. And we need your prayers and appreciate it and covet it. Thank you for your faithfulness very much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, give, uh, give Selena a hug for Betty and I and uh, each of the kids as well. And we'll look forward to the next time God allows our paths to cross and we see each other face to face. Hey, by the way, thanks for that update, video update. Uh, we're going to make that available, show that to the people. And, and uh, thank you so much. Um, you have a great day. You too. God bless you. I love you guys. Love you too. What a blessing to hear from Brent as he shared some thoughts from the book of Hebrews and pertinent thoughts they are in the uh, situation we're facing in America today and, and how we need to be careful as Christians to keep our focus where Jesus Christ instructed us to focus. And that ties back to the morning service today because our focus needs to be thy kingdom come well thanks for being with us today we're glad uh, that we had this opportunity and i trust you'll have a great evening this evening uh, as you wrap up the lord's day and then have a wonderful week serving jesus christ in northern virginia god bless you thank you for joining us for part of a sunday service at community baptist church i hope to meet you soon May God impress his love upon your heart this week. Someday.